Are you being really hard on yourself and not sure how to fix it? Hi there, and welcome back to Ask Dr. Syra, the show where I answer your questions about personal growth, mental health, and relationships. Today's question comes from Forrest. Forrest asks, I know I'm really hard on myself, but I don't know how to fix it. Any ideas? So Forrest says, I know I'm really hard on myself, but I don't know how to fix it. Any ideas? Well, Forrest, I have some ideas for you. <laughs> um, this is something that I personally am very familiar with, being really hard on myself. It's something that I coach my clients through. Um, and so, yeah, so I have a lot of familiarity and I've done a lot of looking inward and looking outward for information about this topic. So I'm glad you asked the question and let's get started. So there's three things that I want to explore as we look at this question of how do I fix being so hard on myself? The first is about whose voice. Okay, so whose voice are you listening to? The second is about the reason. And the third is about the people. Okay, so the voice, the reason, the people. Those are the three areas. And let me get into it. Whose voice? There's um, a theory in psychology called internal family systems. And in internal family systems, we, re we recognize that we are made of many parts, right? So there's not just one kind of version of me or one perspective inside of me. I have different parts. So for example, there's a part of me that's very... Um, hardworking. And then there's another part of me that really likes to have fun. And then there's another part of me that's pretty critical. And then there's another part of me that's pretty forgiving. And so there's all these different parts inside of us, right? And though that's, and, and in internal family systems, they say like, and they're all good. All the parts are good. Even the parts that make you crazy sometimes, there's a purpose for those parts. Um, and we develop them as we grew, um, just to kind of cope with our environment and, you know, and all of the things, the unknowns of, of growing up. And then sometimes parts shift into roles. So roles are now about things that are starting to stifle us, things that are starting to should us. Like I should, as a, you know, as a forgiving person, I should do this. As a hardworking person, I should do that. And so now it's like not just one of the qualities, one of the parts of me, it's actually like a pressure. Okay. So when we talk about whose voice, um, what's happened with those roles is that they've, that part of us has become frozen in time. Okay. So let me give you a practical example. So I'll, I'll speak for myself. Um, there was a long time in my life where I was the role of, I had this role of um, the big sister, right? So what does that mean? So in my family, that meant the pe person that people could come to, um, the person who would always forgive and let go, the person who was responsible and looking after things and planning things and being in charge of things and directing things and like just a lot of responsibility. And I, it started because I was actually a big sister, like physically my, I had younger siblings, right? But um, it shifted into this role where I always had to be good and I always had to be happy and I always had to be in service. And if I wasn't good or happy or in service, I would get this like huge pushback from my family because that's what a big sister does. She's good, she's happy, and she helps other people. And I mean, as you can imagine, that's a really limiting <laughs> slice of life, right? Like if you also have to be happy and you also have to be good and you also have to help people, like you miss out on a lot, right? You miss out on all the other emotions besides happy. You miss out on serving yourself. Um, you miss out on being bad sometimes and like rebelling a little bit and doing some fun things that are like unexpected. So when I started to see that, that this, 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 these kind of parts of me had turned into a role, um, I started working on that. And probably when I was around, like in my late teens, early 20s, I really started looking at, okay, what does it mean to me to be a big sister, right? Now, when I interact with my siblings, I'm so much less controlling. Because before, in that role of big sister, it's like, if my job was to make sure that they were happy, I was to serve them to make sure they were happy. If they weren't happy, something's got to change and I got to fix this. And I was really controlling and I didn't really even know that I was doing that. Right. So as I've let go of that role and started to interact with my siblings more as people rather than my little siblings, 
um, our relationships are like flourishing. But that, that role inside of me of big sister had to be questioned. It had to be evaluated and it had to be challenged a bit. And so what does this have to do with um, being hard on yourself? Well, some of us have those. Th there's three particular roles that I want to tell you about that all of us, all of us share. And there's lots of like different um, opinions about this. And Carl Jung like talks a lot about archetypes and, you know, the different parts of us. And there's lots of in interesting, fascinating information. But I want to share with you three particular roles um, that we all have and that help answer this question of why am I so hard on myself? So the three roles that we all have are, and not, these aren't the only three, but these are three of the many parts of us, is the um, inner child the critical parent, and the loving adult. So the inner child, the critical parent, and the loving adult. So now, the inner child is the part of us that wants stuff, um, doesn't understand, um, gets overwhelmed, um, has fun and is playful, you know, like a child, like, like a kid. There's a part of us that's kid-like. And that's really important that we don't lose that part of us as we grow because otherwise we become very um, lifeless, actually, right? We lose our youthfulness. We lose our joy if we let go of that inner child completely. That's the part of us that knows how to joke and laugh and be silly and do things for no reason and, you know, be spontaneous and try things new and all the things that kids do. Then there's the critical uh, the critical parent. That's the voice of the critical parent. And you might not have had a critical parent in your growing up. Um, many people have had that. Um, I had that. <laughs> and the voice of like, you're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong. Why are you doing this? And you're not going to do that. And I don't think that's a good idea. And like just the criticism, right? The, the you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And honestly, even if our parents were not critical parents, as children, those comments land really hard on us and we really like internalize them and like we remember them so it could have been that just you know two or three times you were criticized for something and you really like absorbed that right so that's the internalized critical parent that voice inside of you that says oh you're just doing it wrong again and like what's wrong with you and why is this so hard for you other people seem to be able to do this and why can't you do it like this other person right like the neighbor's kids or whatever that's the critical parent then there's a loving adult and the loving adult is that like just soft place for you to land. And maybe you had someone like that growing up, just that person who just gets you and doesn't need anything from you or expect you to be anything. They just accept you as you are. And so we have that part of us that's just looking and like smiling and saying, oh man, like you're okay. You're okay. You're going to be okay. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have questions that you want me to answer in a future video, um, send me a quick email. There's an email address at the end of this video. And check out the other videos on the channel. There's lots of interesting stuff to look at. Um, feel free to like and subscribe and pass along. And I'll see you next time. Bye.